Council, come to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mandy, could you please call the roll? Here. Here. Just a couple of announcements. If you're attending this meeting via the telephone, you will be able to provide verbal comments during the dedicated public forums and public hearings. I would ask that you please keep your microphones or telephones on mute until the time at which you wish to speak. Can I get a motion for approval of the tentative agenda? So moved. Manster, Hopkins, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes, oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Young? Yes. Rainer Horst? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Motion passed. Acceptance of Civil Service Commission Certified Police Officer List. Mike, please explain. Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Actually, I'm going to have Chief McShady uh, turn the floor over and have him explain this item. So, Chief. Yes, be happy to. Good evening. The Civil Service Commission uh, met and certified the following officers. Uh, for your consideration, uh, Meyer, Earl Meyer, Sean Mason, and Jacob, um, looks like Nicholas, Nicholas Gack, <laughs> I hope that's correct. Uh, they all passed our uh, staff interviews and the initial process. They were interviewed by civil service that each passed their qualifying scores, so we're asking that you accept their list. Okay, thanks Chief. Anything to add, Mike? No, sir. All right, can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Support. DeYoung, Branderhorst, any discussion? How do we attract somebody from Pennsylvania? I'm sorry? You have How an do answer? We attract somebody from Pennsylvania. I'm glad you asked. So part of our, our recruiting strategy has been to increase our online awareness for openings and that uh, Included doing a little bit of different type of advertising, which we hope to kind of extend our reach a little bit. That's how we believe that we're getting some applicants from a little bit further out, and that's been pretty helpful. Okay, anything else? All right, so all in favor of the motion, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yes. Rainer Horse? Yes. Sandstrom? Yes. Carlstrom? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Yes. Motion passed. All right, now we have opportunity for a public forum. Anyone wishing to address council regarding agenda items, please step forward to the microphone, state your name and address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. Okay, seeing none, we will move on. I get a motion for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Support. Branderhorst Young. Discussion, questions? All right, so all in favor, please say yes, oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Rainer Horse? Yes. Young? Yes. Anstrom? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Four? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, moving on to resolution number 6481 entitled Resolution Ratifying, Confirming, and Approving the Change in Deadline for Submission of Bids and Posting of Revised Notice to Bidders for the materials for the fiber transport west construction. Mike? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I believe we have a combined presentation for both of these items tonight, and ultimately we'll be covering resolutions 6481 through 6483 on the agenda as well tonight. A little bit of background on this project or this proposed project. In essence, what we're proposing to build is a transport line, a fiber optic transport line that would connect, connect uh, the Indian Nola Municipal Utilities to Telefiber with us. Now a little bit of background on this, why this is important for both utilities, is currently both of us share the same internet provider and we also share the same uh, head end or television provider, which is Cedar Falls Utilities. Both of us are currently leasing a backup line for our utilities. We each own one primary line that connects to Cedar Falls. We are also leasing a backup line. So what the thought is, is, is 
we were able to build this line and connect the two utilities, and we'd also be able to stop leasing a line and we'd be able to actually have ownership, which we would share ownership on the joint transport line. We also feel through this line or this project, the reliability for the project would, for both utilities would increase as well. Now, as far as the project is concerned and the materials that we are considering this evening, Mr. Mayor, um, we conducted a bid opening on August 22nd. We received three bids. However, none of the bids were qualifying bids on this as well. And as a result, our project engineer is recommending rejection of the bids this evening. And what the overall plan is for this project is instead of bidding the materials separate from the construction of the project, what we're going to have is just bid it all as one construction project. So the general contractor would be required to provide materials for the project. So Mandy, let's go ahead, please. Now, as far as the resolutions that we have on this, as Mayor DeWard said, the first one that we are considering this evening is Resolution 6481. That is just a correction and a housekeeping item. Resolution 6482 is the traditional, it accepts the plan specifications for a contract, and it also that engineers estimate cost. Resolution 6483 rejects all bids this evening. And with that, Mr. Mayor, that concludes our presentation this evening. We're more than happy to answer any questions the council may have on this item. Okay, thanks, Mike. Can I get a motion for approval? We approve all three and one. No, this no. Right now we're doing the six four eight one. Okay, so move. Support. Young Manstra. Discussion. Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Oppose no. Amanda, please call the roll. Young. Yes. Manstra. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Hopkins. Yes. Four. Yes. Rainerhorn. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, so now we'll move into a public hearing on the matter of the adoption of plan specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the fiber transport west materials bids. And I assume nothing to add, right? That is correct, sir. Okay. So any written comments, Mandy? I have comments. Okay. Any comments, Council? Is there any oral comments from any member of the audience? All right, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Hopkins Spore, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Hopkins? Yes. Spore? Yes. Young? Yes. Rainerhorn? Yes. Manshaw? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, now we move to resolution number 6482 entitled. Resolution adopting plan <coughs> specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the materials for the fiber transport west construction. Uh, can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Oppose, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Do we have a second on that motion? Oh, so support. Yeah. Who's, you did it? And you, okay, so DeYoung uh, Brandhorst. We do have a second now, Mandy. All right. All in favor, please say yes. Oppose, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yeah. Yes. Rainer Yes. Sandra? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ford? Yes. Motion passed. Now we move to resolution number 6483, entitled Resolution Rejecting Bids for the Materials for the Fiber Transport West Construction. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Answer spore. Any discussion? Um, one of the reasons was that there was not, I think the phrase was bid securities. It is, and I would have thought that might be a common thing that should be included in bids from these folks. Or was it just misunderstood by them all or not clear? Or what, what would be your best guess on, on, on why they have it? Yeah. To Doy, to feel free to add in if there's anything additional. But it was my understanding the suppliers of the materials, they weren't used to supplying those of bid securities as a general contractor would. And this was something that is important to note that the legal counsel has, has ruled that this would be a public improvement and those items were required under Iowa law. This wasn't common practice for the supplier of the materials to include those items. Usually on projects such as these, they are, they are subs to a general contractor and the general contractor provides all the bid bonds on these types of projects. <coughs> I would say, in just a summary, they just weren't familiar with the process and it was something new on it. Doy, is there anything to add? No, no, I guess that's the same thing that I got from these guys. Just things that happen to do that. So the, the, the combination now, what we've been 
proposed should eliminate that because those those folks would normally be used to putting that in materials and the work. We believe so. Okay. And then the, the second question that I had was on, on Wesco's uh, table of exceptions. Were any of those deemed unreasonable by the city that what, what Wesco did or not? The interpretation or the ruling that we had from legal counsels that we weren't able to <coughs> make exceptions on those items. And also, in looking at it at that time with the exceptions, it was also the <coughs> engineer's opinion to include the materials with the general contractor on it, too. So it's a dual opinion, both the city and attorney and city engineer. Okay. Okay, anything else? Then we'll vote on the resolution. All in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yes, sir. Yes. Board? Yes. Ian? Yes. Yes. Carlstone? Yes. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, moving on. <coughs> public hearing to consider a zoning code amendment for residential parking in the central business district. Mike? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to explain this item, and I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the big board for presentation on this item. As Mayor Ward stated, what this proposed ordinance would do would amend the city code to exempt converted residential units in the central business district from the requirement to provide off-street parking. It is important to note on July 5th, the City Council did discuss this issue and we directed this matter to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the Commission held three separate work sessions on this item and this is what they are recommending, which is in the proposed ordinance to summarize up on the big board. So when we look at um, entities that would be exempt from providing off-street parking, it would be any use within the CBD other than new build residential uses, which would be exempt from the requirement to provide off-street parking. And this exemption would include residential conversions and existing buildings on set up within existing buildings on the second and third floors. So the thought is if there's a new residential use within the central business district, they would still be required to provide the off-street parking requirements as listed under code. But for existing buildings that are simply being converted, they would not have to provide parking through the city code. Now, um, we've discussed this matter at the City Council and Planning and Zoning uh, Commission unanimously approved this ordinance, and staff is also recommending approval of the ordinance this evening as well. Okay, thank you, Mike. Mandy, any written comments? No written comments. Okay, Council, comments, questions? Uh, was there any opposition at the PMZ from the <laughs> public? Um, Jerry, would you like to answer that question? Or is any opposition at planning and zoning? No, we received two positive uh, support letters, but no opposition. Anything from uh, downtown retail group? Both in support. All in support? All right. Anything else, Council? Any member of the public uh, audience want to comment on this proposal? Could you just clarify the phrasing? This exemption, what exemption are they talking about? And, and does it include or exclude? I, don't, I just don't understand what that word means. The exemption is what would be, would be residential conversions within existing two or three uh, within buildings on the second and third floor. So these would be residential units within existing businesses that are being converted, would, would not have to provide off street parking. Converted from what to what? Or converted to a residential use. Existing buildings would be exempt from the requirement if they convert it to residential. Any new construction would be required to have the off street parking. Uh, Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. Even in the case of a fire? Uh, if a building were burned down and reconstructed, I would assume yes, that would be considered new construction. I guess I I would defer to Gerald on that one. In that case, if it's burned 100% down to the ground, <coughs> we would require it to come back to current code. So if it burns down, Do it on site because they don't have a building that imposes. Yeah, well, I know we have a good fire department, but I think that should be addressed before you pass it. 
Okay, any other comments? All right, then I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. For Brandon Horse Hopkins, discussion. Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Brandon Horse? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Score? Yes. Dion? Yes. Dion Sharp? Yes. Motion passed. So now we move to ordinance number 1016 entitled Ordinance Amending the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Pella, Iowa by amending section 165.32 off street parking for the purpose of exempting converted residential units from being required to provide off street parking in the CBD district. And this is the first reading. Assume we've heard what we need to hear, right? That is correct. All right. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Support. Manstra Hopkins. Discussion. So following up on Dale's comments, um, I think they did anyway, but that building that burned down behind Allen and Newman Dentistry, when that possibly is rebuilt, repurposed, that would have to provide off-street parking. That is if they wanted to provide residential use mm -hmm. within the building. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, if it's commercial use, I think it's a different mm -hmm. bit of your attention. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, anything else? All right, all in favor of approving the ordinance change, uh, please say yes, oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Dan Sharp? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Score? Yes. Dion? Yes. Brainerhorst? Yes. Carlstone? Motion passed. And I, given the fact that there was no opposition at the D and Z meetings and none here, I'd uh, move that we suspend the rules and waive the second and third readings. Support. Okay, so motion made and supported to suspend the second and third reading of this ordinance change. Any discussion? I'd like to check into this a little further rather than just push it on through. I feel comfortable. Okay, uh, anything, Council? Any questions? I, I would support going through the full process. Okay, anything else? All right, all in favor, please say yes, oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Score? Yes. Dion? No. Rainer Horse? No. Carlstone? No. All right, motion fails. <clears throat> Okay, uh, moving on to public hearing regarding issuance of a moratorium in the Oskaloosa Street corridor. Mike? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to explain this item, and I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the big board for this proposed moratorium on the Oskaloosa Street corridor. Now, it is important to note that we did discuss this issue on August 2nd of this year, and we talked about discussing it in the context of the redevelopment plan for the Oskaloosa Street corridor. At the conclusion of the discussion, staff uh, was directed to place this proposal mm -hmm. for formal consideration. And specifically, the ordinance that we are proposing this evening would approve a moratorium which would apply to the issuance of building permits for a single family and two family residential homes within the commercially zoned districts uh, on Oskaloosa Street, that by Oskaloosa Street. The districts that we're talking about would be the yellow highlighted areas on Oskaloosa Street. And generally, if you wanted to look at this geographical area that we are proposing this evening, it would be on Oskaloosa Street, at the Main Street intersection, so the intersection of Oskaloosa Street and Main Street, and would extend all the way out to 240 of the Avenue and the Oskaloosa Street intersection. So it would be for any place that was located on here that's commercially zoned, that they're indicated in yellow. These is where the moratorium would be, but it would only be for the issuance of a single family or two family residential home. So, Mandy, let's go ahead, please. Now, if council were to approve this moratorium, it would remain in place until December 31st of 2023, or until council adopts the necessary zoning changes to implement an economic development plan for the corridor. So, whichever would come first at this point. 
Now, if this is important to know that it does not apply to existing single family and two family homes which are being rebuilt due to catastrophic events such as a fire or tornado. So the moratorium would not apply to existing homes that are being rebuilt, rebuilt in the event of disaster. Now, in summary, Mr. Mayor, we are recommending approval of the ordinance this evening and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions uh, the council would have on this item. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, any written comments, Mandy? No written comments. Okay. Council, comments, questions? I think it's important <clears throat> to note that we did put that caveat in there for the existing homes on Oskaloosa Corridor. But, uh, to Dale's point, that, that's been looked into in the passage of this moratorium. That if a home, single or double family home, would burn or uh, be demolished somehow, they can rebuild their home on the existing lot. I know that was a concern of yours as well. It was a concern of mine as well. Okay, anything else, Council? Any member of the public have comment about this uh, ordinance uh, change. All right, then I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. DeYoung, Hopkins, any discussion? All right, all in favor, please say yes, oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yeah. Yes. Hopkins? Yes. 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 Motion passed. Okay, moving on to the ordinance number 1017 entitled Ordinance Approving Moratorium on the Issuance of Building Permits for Single Family and Two Family Residential Homes within the Commercially Zoned District in the Oskaloosa Street Corridor. This is the first reading. Anything to add, Mike? No, sir. All right, can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Four. Banstra Spore. Any discussion? There, there's some pretty good vacant parcels there. What if somebody proposes building a three or four story apartment building? That would be permissible. That would be permissible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just single family or two or yeah. duplexes basically. Yep. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay, all in favor please say yes, oppose no, Mandy please call the roll. Yes. 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 Rainer Horse? Yes. Carl Stone? Yes. Hawkins? Yes. Motion passed. <clears throat> All right, moving on to resolution number 6484 entitled Resolution Approving the First Amendment to the Community Improvements Reimbursement Agreement between the City of Pella and Spirit of Pella for additional holiday decorations in Central Park and the Central Business District. Mike? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to explain this item, and I would like to mention that this presentation is a joint presentation. We'll actually be covering three resolutions on the agenda this evening. Those would be resolutions 6484 through 6486 this evening. Now, a little bit of background on this, as Council is well aware, on July 19th, we did discuss with the Spirit of Pella a proposed lighting plan, holiday lighting plan for the downtown area. At the conclusion of those discussions, Council did direct staff to proceed with the formal contracts that we are considering this evening. Now, as far as the total cost of the program over the next three fiscal years, so this would be the fiscal year that we're currently in, that would end on June 30th, 2023, and would extend through June 30th, 2025. The total cost for the contracts is just over $155,000. But we do have an itemized account of $155,000. This would be our contract with Wright Outdoor Solutions. On it that provides most of the holiday decorations that we have in the central business district. The secondary contract that is going to be proposed this evening is with Jansen Custom Fabrication, and that is bounds just over 59, approximately $59,500, and it's for the proposed lighted tunnel in the central in the central park. So, Mandy, let's go ahead, please. Now, as far as the cost distribution with this and the agreement that we are considering this evening for the Spirit of Pella. What's being proposed is the Spirit of Pella would be reimbursing the City Council, or the City of Pella rather, for the cost that the City would be budgeting above and beyond what we have done in the normal course of business or through the years. 
but roughly we spend fourteen thousand or just a little bit over fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars per year on holiday lighting. So what the Spirit of Color would do is anything above that amount, they are proposing to reimburse the city 100% on. So when we look at the proposed allocation of $155,000, roughly $108,000 would be reimbursed by the Spirit of Hella. The city's share of that would be roughly $47,204. And once again, that, rep that represents what our traditional cost for the holiday lighting program has been through the years. So let's go ahead, please, Mandy. We do have listed up on the big board the responsibilities of the city of Pella along with the spirit of Pella as well. But once again, the thought is, or what's being proposed, is anything new or above and beyond the city's base plan would be reimbursed 100% by the spirit of Pella over the next three fiscal years. So Mandy, let's go ahead to the summary, please. And once again, uh, the resolutions that we have this evening, um, resolution 6484 is to approve an amendment with the spirit of Pella for the reimbursement agreement. Resolution 6485 would be to approve the three-year agreement with Wright Outdoor Solutions for holiday lighting. And Resolution 6486 would be for Janssen Custom Fabrication, and that is for the proposed lighted tunnel. And with that, Mr. Mayor, that concludes the staff presentation. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions the Mayor and Council may have on this item. All right, thank you, Mike. So I need a motion for approval of Resolution number 6484. So moved. DeYoung. Score. Discussion. Okay, all in favor, please say yes, opposed, no, Mandy, please call the roll. Yeah. Yes. Four. Yes. Rainer Four. Yes. 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 Motion passed. Okay, now moving to resolution number 6485, entitled Resolution Approving Contracts with Right Outdoor Solutions for Holiday Decorations in Central Park and the Central Business District. Can I get a motion for approval? I move. Four. DeYoung, Hopkins, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes, oppose, no, <coughs> motion, please call the roll. DeYoung? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Four? Yes. Rainer Horse? Yes. Amstrad? Yes. Carlstone? Yes. Motion passed. Now moving to resolution number 6486 entitled resolution approving a contract with Janssen Custom <coughs> Fabrication for a 60 foot lighted tunnel in Central Park. Can I get a motion for approval? So Who moved? Support. <laughs> Who moved? Hopkins, DeYoung. Okay, me. Any discussion? Uh, would it be fair to say that these are the sort of enhancements that the local option sales tax supports? Could you repeat that, please? Yeah, I, I'm just wondering if this is the sort of thing that the local option sales tax funds would support. It would be an eligible criteria with the current tax if it was approved by council via resolution on it. It would be a good category for local option, but traditionally we have not included holiday lighting for the holiday um, for the yeah. right now. The budget, right? That is correct. <coughs> okay, anything else? <coughs> All in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Hopkins? Yes. Young? Yes. yes. Rainer Horse? Yes. Amstruck? Yes. Carlstone? Yes. Four? Yes. Okay, motion passed. Moving on, resolution number 6487 entitled Resolution Approving Engagement Agreement with the Allers and Cooney PC to act as <coughs> bond counsel for the city of Pella in connection with general obligation capital loan notes. Mike? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to explain this item. And as what Mayor DeWard stated, we're entertaining two agreements with the Allers and Cooney law firms to serve as bond counsel for the city and the proposed bond issues that we are considering um, this evening. The first issue would be $1.6 million in general obligation capital loan notes in the proposed street projects, the Curry Street reconstruction project as well as the Monroe Street reconstruction project as well. The second bond issue would be for $2.2 million in general capital capital obligation capital notes for a renewal of projects in the Prairie Ridge commercial development. Now it is important to know for these projects that we have listed up here, Council has previously approved all these projects that we have listed up here and the proposed source has always been a proposed debt issue for the projects as well. So with that, 
we have two separate agreements and the proposed fees are just over 38 or they're at $38,500 for both of the proposed bond issues and so the fees amounts would be $38,500 for both engagements with them. I believe that concludes our presentation this evening. We wouldn't have to answer any questions the mayor council may have on this item. Okay, thank you, Mike. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Or Mr. Hopkins, any discussion? No. Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yes, sir. Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Four? Yes. Ian? Yes. Rainerberg? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Motion passed. Moving on, resolution number 6488, entitled Resolution Fixing Date for a Meeting on the Authorization of a Loan Agreement and the Issuance of Not to Exceed. $1.6 million in general obligation capital loan notes of the City of Pella, State of Iowa for essential corporate purposes and providing for publication of notice thereof. Mike? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to explain this item as Mayor DeWards had stated. What this resolution really does is establishes September 20th as the public hearing date for an authorization of a loan agreement and an issuance of a maximum not to exceed amount of $1.6 million in tax exempt general obligation capital loan notes. But once again, these are associated with proposed street reconstructions or actually street upgrades for both of these items as both of these road segments are gravel roads within our community as well. And so what this resolution does is just simply establishes the public hearing date. On September 20th, council will have a resolution that will consider the maximum not to exceed amount for this bond issue. And so once again, uh, Mr. Mayor, that concludes the staff presentation. Be more than happy to, to explain or answer any questions the council may have on this item. All right, thank you. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Court. Brander Horst DeYoung, discussion, questions? Mike, the only question I had, the, the capitalized interest, do we have any temporary financing between them? Those, that's my understanding of the capitalized interest, that's what we had that included in our pro forma, and that, that's where including the capitalized interest and just simply establishing a not to exceed amount of 1.6 million. Because usually that means there's been interest that has accrued that you roll into it, right? Mm -hmm. That's my understanding of it. That's correct. Yeah. In this case, Corey, do you want to address yeah, that question? Yeah, so the first payment would be in the upcoming fiscal year, so in 2024, so we capitalize interest for FY20. Both for the first payment? Yeah. Then. Okay. Yeah. And the principal payments would occur in FY24. right now and we have $155,000 just in a pro forma for the maximum amount to exceed so it's included in case we choose to, to do proceed with that. Okay. Okay, anything else? All right, we'll vote on the resolution. All in favor, please say yes. Oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Resolution number 6489, entitled Resolution Fixing Date for a Meeting on the Authorization of a Loan Agreement and the Issuance of Not to Exceed 2.2 .2 Million General Obligation Capital Loan Notes of the City of Pella, State of Iowa, for Essential Corporate Purposes and Providing for <coughs> Publication of Notice Thereof. Mike? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to explain this item. This item is very similar to what we just considered. What the resolution would actually do is approve September 20th as the public hearing date for an authorization of a loan agreement and issuance of a maximum not to exceed amount of $2.2 million in taxable general obligation capital loan notes. And once again, this is for the city's financial obligation for the Prairie Ridge commercial development area. All we're simply doing is setting the public hearing date for September 20th. And on September 20th, what we're simply doing will be considering a maximum not to exceed amount. $2.2 million in general obligation loan notes. So with that, Mr. Mayor, that concludes the staff presentation on this item. We wouldn't have to answer any questions the Mayor and Council may have on this item. All right, thank you, Mike. Can I get a motion for approval? Hopkins? Court. DeYoung, discussion? All right, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Hopkins? Yes. DeYoung? Yes. 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 Carlson? Yes. Four. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, uh, abstract of bills number 
2110. Can I get a motion for approval? Move to approve and issue warrants. Miranda Horse. Support. Hopkins, any discussion or questions? All right, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Rainer, yes. Hopkins, yes. Spore, yes. Ann, yes. Anstrom, yes. Crossbow, yes. Motion passed. All right, uh, we're other business. Any member of council have any other business that you would like the council to address this evening? Uh, I, like I assume everybody else, has been getting a whole stream of emails regarding the road out to the Catholic Church. Has anything materially changed along that line? Hey, Mark, can you speak up? I can't hear you. Oh, excuse me. Use your mic. Uh, I'm sitting here all relaxed. Um, I and I think everybody has been getting a whole series of Am I on? I'm not on. No wonder you can. There we now go. you are. Let me get you. I, I think, are we good now? Stereo? <laughs> uh, we have we have been receiving um, a whole series of emails from the folks concerned with the uh, road out to the Catholic Church. Uh, this has been an item that's been going on for a while, and I just wonder if anything has changed that we're getting all these contacts all of a sudden. Um, I don't believe anything has changed in this background. What we're talking about is the 218th Avenue, and for this particular road segment, the issue at hand is approximately 50% is within the normal corporate limits, 50% is roughly in the unincorporated area of Marion County. And to actually do the road upgrade, it would take approval of both the Pella City Council and the Marion County Supervisors. We plan to respond back to the Catholic Church and inform them that the council will consider this item during our coming budget deliberations that we usually have in January of next year, 2023. Was consent of property owners necessary also? Um, consent of property owners, where we typically did, and it's been city policy on, on this, is consent of the property owners is necessary if you're looking to have the 100% of the city's city project that the city of Pella is proposing to do the entire project, but the city's position has been annexation is required. And so that would require plenty of property owners that on the 218th Avenue be willing or voluntarily annex into the city of Pella, and that's been done for other projects in the past. So the way it stands now, it would have to be done as a joint project with the Marion County Supervisors and legally, since I have the road is outside the city limits, we've had legal opinions that the city cannot expend funds outside of the city limits mm -hmm. on road projects. And so that's why I would take the support of the Marion County Supervisors as well. So nothing's really changed. It's just um, kind of come to the surface again. I, I, I interpret it as a friendly reminder that they're still interested in having the project done. Okay. Anything else, Council? All right, at this time, any member of the public have any other business you would like to uh, address the council with? If you do, please come forward to the microphone, uh, state your name and address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. Good to be back. Wish you the best. I've addressed the council before. <clears throat> I was born eight miles west of Bel Air, and unfortunately, I lost the farm to the United States government through eminent domain. But consequently, I moved into Pella. I graduated from Pella Community High School in 1961, and I've been working my idea off ever since. <laughs> I have three questions for you. First question is, why are you and the council taking away our property tax relief for the next 20 years to the tune of six and a half million dollars? Well, this isn't a question and answer session, so <laughs> you let us know whatever your opinion about I asked to be on the council earlier this said that I could come up here now and do it. Say, okay. uh, all right. I would ask where that number comes from. Where that number comes from? It comes from the sheet. 
the value to be on the, on the balances and no money for property tax relief. And don't, we, we continue to have, what, 50% for infrastructure project? Can you hear you? Oh. I'm sorry. You just gotta get closer to the yeah. mic. <laughs> My understanding is that fifty percent for infrastructure projects would still be there. I'm sorry. It's my understanding that the fifty percent of local auction sales tax that has been dedicated towards things like infrastructure projects, which indirectly is tax relief, would still be there. Twenty percent of the loss income went to property tax relief and they've taken that away from us. Um, over the last 10 years, the city has spent approximately 50% on property tax relief and infrastructure for the local option sales and services tax. So it's my understanding that the city still intends with the new local option sales and services tax to spend 50% on infrastructure relief. Infrastructure, we've always considered both the categories, property tax relief and infrastructure, one and the same. So Council Member DeYoung, you are correct. 50% would still be dedicated towards infrastructure, so there's no material change on the distribution of the local option sales and services tax. 50% would be spent on quality of life projects, 50% would be spent on infrastructure projects. Infrastructure so projects. Can clarify further what uh, tax relief means? Is that language maybe what's getting us caught up in things? Can you clarify that, maybe for me and maybe some in the audience? What I think that might be semantical. <coughs> yeah. Property tax relief is it's funds that are transferred directly to the general fund, and once they're in the general fund, we use it as property tax relief, and we show what the city's tax rate would have been without the property tax relief and what it would have been. And what the city has done is they've allocated those property tax funds in essence to support other projects within it, and that's what how the property tax relief is. So. That's why we've always considered property tax relief and infrastructure one and the same from our standpoint. So the distribution is still the same. It's just being identified as infrastructure improvements. I don't know if that helps clarify. It does for me a little bit. I do have a document here, June 21, 2022. The city Council of the City of Belle Isle met in a regular session in the Public Safety Complex, 614 Main Street, Belle Isle. At 6 p.m. p.m. on the top date, who was present for Mary Ward and chair of the following councilmen: Dion by the phones, or Brenner Horse, Master Hawkins, and Carlson. Absent none. <coughs> Councilmember Master introduced and delivered to the clerk a resolution thereafter entitled the resolution calling for a special election on imposition of local option sales tax and service within the city of Colorado. That the same be adopted. Council Hockey second the motion to roll calls. Eyes, Dion, Spore, Matt Horse, Master, Hawkins, Carlson, Mays, none. Welcome, Mary, declared a removed resolution 6452 adopted. And it goes on to talk about when it starts and when it ends. It says, Shall the following measure be adopted? Yes or no? Revenues for the local option sales and service tax are to be allocated as far off follows. Zero percent shall be used for property tax relief. Now, over the next 20 years, that's going to cost us property taxpayers about six and a half million dollars. I think it's time that you people look at this before we go to the election. It's all semantics, Dale. That, that 50% is going into the general fund, and those, whether you call it property tax relief yeah. or infrastructure work, it's all general fund. And without those funds over the coming years, the money has to come from somewhere. That's it's right. not contributed by our friends that visit Pella. So we are probably, given my experience down the road, looking at a property tax increase if we don't have those local option sales tax funds. The 
Is there anybody in here that has not had a tax increase on their property tax in the last 10 years? But let's differentiate between valuation and tax rate. You just took fire away from me because the mayor says here <clears throat> the city of Pella has been able to maintain its existing property tax rate for the last 21 years. We're not talking about rate, we're talking about the amount of taxes. That we don't control. <laughs> the, only, the only thing this body can control is the rate. Well, the county assessor is the is the one who assesses value. You you're right. You pay more in city taxes, but not because city council has changed the rate. And there's no there is no plan by this body to raise the rate. And that's the only thing we can control. If you don't like your assessment, you don't like what you're paying tax on, you need to go visit the assessor and protest that. But that's what you pay tax on, but the rate has remained the same for 21 years, and it will remain the same moving into the future. But, you also but I al and also, uh, 21 years, I didn't, I didn't get the figure, but the budget to manage the city of Pella would have grown at a very large amount over the last 21 years. But for us to be able to maintain a $10.20 tax rate is pretty remarkable when you think about the cost. And so the reason we have been able to hold the line on that is because of valuation, because our city's growing, because of some of the projects and the companies that uh, live and work in this city, the things that have been done. We build new houses like crazy. We build. Uh, commercial properties like crazy that's why we can maintain a rate for 21 years and part of part of maintaining that rate comes from the local option sales tax that is used for infrastructure projects that otherwise would be paid for with property tax so you can call it property tax relief or not property tax relief but the commitment from the council is that 50% of the lost revenue is going to go for infrastructure projects. And if we did pay for it with that, it would have to come out of property taxes. So we are saving property taxes by using the lost revenue for these infrastructure projects. Not when you're going to build a project three miles from the town square. That's, okay. You know. Yeah, I, I have a little presentation I'm going to give when everybody's done. Because there is so much misinformation out there. I want to get the facts on the table. I've got a presentation that talks, you know, the good thing from our standpoint is every meeting we have, anything we talk about is public. You have every opportunity to question us, but it's public. And so I'm going to go through what has actually been said, what has actually been proposed, not what these crazy numbers that I see out there some fantasy land about costs and this kind of thing. We're going to talk about what has actually been discussed by the city council. We have a plan moving forward, and it'll be real, not some fantasy numbers that are out there. Okay. Now, I've got two more questions. All right. You're, You're well past your three I minutes, I but am. I will let you. No. I will let you move on. But I think it's vitally important that I get answers to these three questions before next. Weeks election. Okay. okay. Your proposed project, three miles southeast of the town square, is estimated to be forty-five million. However, the old Pella High School project is estimated to be five point five million to twenty-two million. Your figures just don't add up. Okay. Now I will. Uh, the presentation I'll give in a minute will answer that question. Okay. It'll answer the first will question. You, will you take it? Take questions after you make your presentation. I will. Okay. The third question I have for you is that if Bella is such a great place, and I agree that it is a great place to live, that's why I'm living here today. Like I said, I was born eight miles west of here. Bella is my home. Why is your family members acquiring lots and trying to build a duplex in a neighboring town 10 miles from Bella? And that's a project that I understand has been put on hold because of lumber costs. Say, say that again. 
Why are my family members? I understand that some of your family has acquired some lots in an existing town, and they were going to build a duplex. That's all they're saying. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, I'll do some more checking and get I, back to you. I don't know. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. I'll listen to your presentation, and we'll go from there. Anybody else want to comment? <clears throat> Because I will leave, I will answer Dale's three questions. Somatics. What is that, Mark? That Smoke is, and mirrors? No, that is what do you choose to call it? Is it tomato or tomato? Right. Mr. Mayor, you said it will be fit for sin. Yep. Put it in writing. We'll vote it's in writing. We approved it. It said zero. Put fifty percent where it said zero. You don't trust me. I don't trust you. We all like things in black and white. It said zero percent. We want it. We want a tax. We want a sales tax. We do. But we want it in black and white. It's my understanding, Mr. Mark says, it, our understanding that we will do this. No, you put it in black and white, and we will <laughs> vote for it. This. Somatics, understandings, probabilities. No, we're not buying it. It says 0%, and that's what we have to go by. Because you can change your mindset, well, we never promised that. You don't trust me, I don't trust you. Let's just play it fair and square, get it black and white. We'll get, you think it's funny, don't you, Mr. I'm sorry. Well, you know, okay. you're, you're the guy that came up and told us last time we were building a $3 million dog park. So, Keith, what you say doesn't make a lot of sense because $3 million wow. dog park has that's never true. been discussed. Wow. That's, that's what you're going with? Well, I'm just repeating okay. what you told us. You don't trust me. I don't trust you. Put it black and white and then we're both even, okay? Can you do that? I do know that we have a budget process every January, February, March, and we lay out exactly how money is going to be spent. That's the responsibility of this, of this board. So is it going to be exactly 50 percent property tax relief, like you just mentioned? There will be 50 percent of the local option sales tax will be spent on infrastructure projects within the city of Pella. You put it on the ballot, and we'll vote for it until it's on the ballot. It's already it's on the ballot. It, it is says not. it right there. What it says, what it's we will probably, for. it's our understanding is what you're giving me. So your example for me is the same to you. You want to take 0% property relief tax to the people for the rest of my life. Knoxville can put it in black and white and say, we're going to give 50% to the people. Why can't you? Keith, Why can't what, you do that? Keith, what, what's Knoxville's tax rate? I'm talking about the local Keith, what is Knoxville's tax rate? That's fine. They can have a tax rate. You guys got They can have the 50% too. It's 17 but It's 70% higher than Pellets. They need 100% tax relief, and when they do that, they're not going to lower their taxes by even one dime. It's just the bucket where it goes in, where the dollars come out of. Can you put it in black and white? Where you're I don't have to put it in black and white. That's the way it goes. Any city that, that, that puts money in property tax relief, it doesn't lower property taxes. It just goes in that bucket, and that's where the dollars come okay. from. So you're going to take our property tax relief away and put it down to 0%, correct? Not, not if it's spent on infrastructure. Why? That comes out of the same bucket. It says in the ballot it'll be 0%. Well, I've heard that 16 times from you. It is 0 So what are you going to do with that money that you took away? It goes in infrastructure. It doesn't say that on the ballot. Anything else, Keith? Can you shut me off? Well, your three minutes is about up. You know, we have a lot of volunteers in this town. Tulip time, events. They put a lot of effort to help bring local revenue in this town. And you just want to take the property tax away now, don't you? What incentive do they have to help with that when you're going to say, nope, it's zero. That's that's despicable. Come on, guys. If you want to give back 50%, then say you will. But until you put it black and white, there's no reason for us to, to believe you, just like you wouldn't believe me. 
I want you as members tonight to voice your support against 0% property tax relief. And if you can't do that, you will forever be known as a council that took it away. You can walk down the street, I'm sure it don't bother you guys, but people will look at you and say, yeah, that's the guy that took our property tax relief away. And then they call it something else, like a probably or an understanding or semantics or something. Those, those will be you people. So you can either tell your constituents that you do not support these actions, or you can forever carry it with you. And is that how you guys run your businesses? Uh, Mike, can you clarify for me, is, does our current loss that's expiring, does any of those dollars go into a fund or a bucket or a title called property tax relief? Yes. Or does it go into a, the big bucket called the general I'm, I'm still lost at what, what you're, I, I think we're saying the same things, saying it from different angles. That's what semantics is. And I guess uh, I'm not trying to throw big words out, I just, I want to clarify what. I, I think that's going to be addressed in the, in the presentation okay. that we have, so. I, so I, I, I think we're saying the same thing from two different sides of the doorway. We both want to walk to the door, but we're yelling at each other because yeah, I want, we're I want the door to act. I do. So I, I, so, think, I think that's a, maybe going to be addressed. But yeah. So when the city wrote that, why did you write it as 0% yeah. property tax relief? Can you, Mike, would you explain how Iowa law requires to put some percentage in there in the thought on, process? On the ballot, you have to specify property tax relief and the percentage on, on the ballot, even if it's zero. Can you speak to the be, mic, please? I can't, I can't hear you. Sorry. I'm not sure the mic's on. I'm speaking right into it. Is that better? No, the sound says the mic. Okay. I'll try to talk louder. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So it looks like it went back on. So, all right. On for, for the local option sales and services tax, you have to put on property tax relief in a percentage, even if it's zero. Even if the money for property tax relief is ultimately used for other projects such as infrastructure, you have to put on a percentage. That's the only category you have to put on a percentage. What the thought was is looking at the city's proposal, 50% would be spent on infrastructure, 50% on quality of life on, on it. So we were trying to be a little bit more direct in the proposal and the discussions that we had on the matter. That was the intent. That, that was the thought. Why do that? Did I answer your question, Mayor? Okay. Mm -hmm. So can we go back and have us lock, lost tax, sales tax, can we go ahead and have one that says 20% shall be used for property tax relief for 10 years? Council would have to approve any resolution for a low option sales and services tax on it. So. Um, I'm not sure what your proposal is, Mr. Hawksburg. Uh, My proposal is the existing. We would love to vote for that, but we cannot vote for something that's poorly worded and smoke and mirrors. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably give you 50%. No. Put it in there and say that you will, and then we'll support it. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Can you put your mic down so we can hear you? Sure. 222 East Jefferson Park Drive. In trying to understand this, can you explain? I know your presentation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're kind of rolling right now. Um, why did that number move? Like, it was a 20% property tax relief line item right there. So, can you explain? I don't know how all this works, but I'm trying to understand it. So can you explain to me why it got taken from that individual line item of property tax relief and got lumped into other stuff? I think if I recall the discussion we had the night we passed the resolution, uh, and Calvin, I think you brought it up. It, uh, it's really, a, well, I guess I don't want to interrupt you, it's really a moot point. It, it's, it's, when the local option tax was passed by the legislature about how many years ago there that was a, a, a 
stipulation that they put there to say you have to put a percentage even if it's zero for property tax relief. The fear was that there was, I think, and again this goes back a number of years, and I'm going back to my city clerk days of light, and that the that there's some anti-tax groups of, of everything, you know, we don't want tax for anything. So the legislator placated them by putting that language that, that had to be in, in the ballot. Unfortunately, they never said they never defined uh, property tax relief. They didn't give a mathematical formula. They didn't do a, uh, a, uh, a de definition on where those dollars had to go. They just gave a blank check for property tax relief. Um, by the same token, that same legislation did an excruciating job on, on how the distribution went. And it's a combination of, I think, the property tax values in a static period from 82 to 85 that doesn't ever change no matter how much gets built in Pella since 1982 and but in conjunction with changing figures on certified census results so that part was extremely detailed and, and very mathematically driven property tax rights was just property tax relief excuse me was just thrown in there as, as a uh, as a phrase that, that had no definition and had no distinction between infrastructure. Why? I can't tell you. So since the line is on there, then can't you give a percentage of, I mean, why, why does that well, have to be zero? Well, historically, we, way before, we, we, how much have we been putting into infrastructure from our, 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 our tax? Between the categories of property tax relief and infrastructure over the last 10 years, it's been 50%. So, so that's the, and, and it comes out of the same bucket. So it was never a separate fund to begin with? I, I don't no. think so. No, it's general no, fund. Yeah. It was in the general fund. It doesn't make much. I'm trying. Well, I, I, <laughs> I'm think, trying I, I think, Robin, a lot of people, when they think property tax relief, if we put a dollar here, that should lower a tax assessment but it never does. It says it on your tax receipts, what you get for property tax relief. It has nothing to do with where you guys put it. Yeah, we're, we're, what we pay for from it, it does. We make every decision where it comes from. Yeah, but my tax receipts state how much property tax relief I get in dollars and cents. But it doesn't lower your rate at all. I'm not talking about rate. I'm talking about the amount that I may got the Marion mm -hmm. County Treasurer. Is property tax payments. I think you're talking about two different things. Anything else, Rob? No, that's all. Okay. Uh, Mike Filippini, 205 East 13. I just want to clarify what I'm hearing is instead of using property tax relief, <coughs> you're being more specific and in putting it into infrastructure. And infrastructure equals property tax relief. Is you that correct? You got it. Thank you got it. It still comes out of our pocketbook, though. So, Dr. Carlson, if I could provide you just a little clarity. So, I've spent some considerable time with the Board of Supervisors over the last 30 days talking about this very thing. By, by the state code and by their, their rule of law, you have to designate what your property tax relief is. You can't, in kind, provide property tax relief. Now, you can go pay the street and not ask the citizens to pay for it, but you can't go pay the street and say, well, we're not gonna raise your taxes a quarter because we paid that street. When, when they dole that money out, when they collect the tax, if the city of Pella designates 20%, 30%, 40%, that goes in to a property tax relief bucket. It doesn't go into a general obligation fund, so your semantics are not accurate. You can't do one in lieu of the other. So you can, you can call the County Board of Supervisors and do the same thing I did, put five minutes worth of effort into it, and they will explain the whole thing to you. Mike, you know that very well. It's about what you designate. If you designate zero, it's zero. It doesn't matter that you're gonna spend six and a half million dollars on our street. It's zero property tax relief. Now, you can go back, Mr. Mayor, and say, we're going to pay for that and not ask you to pay for that separately. Absolutely. But that doesn't consider property tax relief. That's just the city choosing to pave a road and not ask the citizens to pay for it. So hopefully that 
So it's the guarantee that, that uh, correct that, that bucket uh, fulfills correct. for the year. So if if the current loss tax, just so that we're also clear, to pay for Christmas lights out of a loss tax, this current loss tax expires the end of 2023. The one we're going to vote on doesn't go into effect until 2024. So to pay for these lights, to your example, Mr. Young, would have to come out of this current loss tax. The one we're voting on in a week has nothing to do with paying for those lights now. Because you didn't designate in that ballot that you want to spend $100,000 on Christmas lights. Sorry about your luck, City of Pella. I mean, that money is earmarked for facilities, this infrastructure, all the things that were clearly marked out on the sample ballot that you can all go see online. It's all there. And to Mr. Klein's point, it is earmarked as 0% property tax relief. So it's not semantics. It's not out of a general fund. It is 0%. Hopefully that gives you some clarity on that. <clears throat> Thank you, Tony. Scott DePenning, uh, Town 9 Broadway. Um, I'm going to greatly modify what I wrote this afternoon. Uh, many of the items have already been talked about, and I don't want to reiterate any more than I have to. But in lieu of what Tony just brought up, I did bring a question to the council two or three times ago about the $985,000 odd dollars of our current loss tax that got directed at a new facility, which from what I just heard Tony say, isn't a proper use of that funds if it was not spelled out in the current loss tax bond issue. So that that's one question I have. You've already spent or earmarked nine hundred eighty-five thousand dollars towards a project that is the elephant in the room because you have rotated a rec complex into discussion on a regular basis for over a year, and the fact that you're not specifying a percentage to relief, and I understand you're. The old was 20, and you did other projects that equated to equal to 50%. I don't understand why you can't just say 50%, because that's the reason people are concerned is that you're going to choose a project that they have no control over, and that there's a lot of people that don't, I don't think, want it. They don't understand it. Um, I've done my own research, uh, and it's easy research. The three cities, three of the cities that you've used as examples in past presentations, I believe were Waukee, Indianola, and Marion, Iowa, correct? Uh, presentation pertaining to what? A rec center. Uh, excuse me. A, a rec center. Okay. Your examples were, and some of your examples were Waukee, Indianola, and Marion, Iowa. I, I believe that's correct. We did look at other rec centers in those communities. Okay, did you look at what the current standings are of those facilities. Excuse me, sir. Have you researched or looked into the current statuses of all three of those facilities and how they came to be and how they're being operated? I, I think, uh, somebody correct me, I think what was on charts was square footage and cost at inception. Correct. Were those the two categories that were on there? Okay. I, think. I looked into those and they're all three financially challenged, would be a kind word to use. Every one of them has had their own set of problems. Uh, Ankeny was one, they had, they had a flood. They still haven't figured out how they're going to pay for a new facility. They're a much larger city than we are, much larger tax base. They're struggling with making a decision like this. Indianola and Waukee are both part of the Greater Des Moines YMCA's. Every one of those have an I, uh, YMCA affiliation, and the city doesn't have an all-in thing. They only got a piece of the pie, and it's not even a quarter of it. So when you talk about 45 to $60 million, and that that's the city 
uh, minus maybe your 12, 12 million from corporate sponsorships, which they talk about getting corporate sponsorships. That still leaves the city with a huge obligation. Mm -hmm. The city hasn't even proactively supported a regular gym facility. The one we had has been three different things before it's where it's at now, and that hasn't even been for six months. So I, I do have questions and I have concerns about how you've got it worded. I heard what Tony said and I believe that he did his due diligence, so I do believe what he says. And it doesn't sound like that's the direction you've taken the ballot that we're going to vote on next week. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anita Fisher, 1546 Pleasant Drive. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I do have some questions. Um, would you explain to me, you know, on social media, it seems like there's a huge rush to get this passed. Can you explain to me why it appears to be such a rush? I don't, I don't think there's a rush. We set a date oh. to have the vote. Okay, okay. Well, well, there is a rush because what? people aren't being honest. What, what's the rush? We set this back in June, a date to have this vote, and that's okay. what's been on the calendar since then. What I mean by a rush is people on Facebook who, who you know, you know, and they should know better, aren't telling uh, the general public that it can be voted on again in March in 2023. And again, Can you review the rules? And again in September of 2023. So there's many people that think, gosh, if we don't pass this, we're going to lose our loss money. That's not true. Why are we making people think this? That's false pretenses and making people vote yes. And another thing, how can citizens make an informed decision on how to vote when you haven't given us any details on how much this rec center is going to cost? You give us roundabout numbers. How about maintenance? Operating costs? No intelligent business person, homeowner, or property owner would make decisions of this magnitude without first knowing the cost. So why would the citizens of Pella be forced to do this? You're not giving us any details. Do you not understand that we want to know this? This could be on our backs if it falls flat, guys. I want people to understand social media, wherever. There is no rush. We are not losing the tax money. Speaking of cost, are all the citizens being considered when it comes to this rec center? I don't know about you guys, but I've heard plenty of folks from Pelicorp and Vermeers say, I'll never use it going to cost too much. Are you considering everybody? Our senior citizens are living paycheck to paycheck on a fixed income. Not just them, we've got our single mothers, our young families. They are the future of Pella and they're struggling to make ends meet. We want people to stay. We want people to grow, to come and move here. It's my understanding that this rec center is hopefully going to be, bring people to be here, to live here. Why are we making it almost impossible for those that live here to stay? Why? Do you not care about them? It sure seems that way. My last point is this. Inflation is skyrocketing. I don't need to tell you that. You can go to the grocery store and know that. Is this really a time to add a financial burden on our people? It's really not. You need to consider everybody. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Yeah. All right. Oh. Totally different topic for you. Okay. <laughs> Um, you guys probably remember me a few months ago. Jeff Dingeman, uh, born and raised here, lived here 30 years, and currently lived out of city limits, uh, Pell School District. Um, I, uh, I was here in May last time <laughs> with the planning and zoning and had my preliminary plot picked apart and approved with some exceptions, and then also at city council on, I don't know, May 17, maybe, and then it was approved. We have moved forward to submit that exact preliminary plot into a final plot. Nothing's changed, and we are being told that we cannot proceed as it was approved. It didn't change anything. I imagine if we had to change something, then they would have to pick it apart again. But it's been picked apart <coughs> half a dozen, a dozen times since last fall, <coughs> and we thought we were in consensus with everybody at PNZ office, and I'm just wondering who I can go to either tonight or after this and get an answer. I haven't gotten very far with Gerald because he's telling me I have to change it no matter what, but I'm under the understanding as well as Garden Associates, Brad Udemark and Aaron Vanruckel, that the preliminary plot that was approved was already picked apart and could be submitted and approved as it was approved those that night at City Council. Um, so I mean, I might not go anywhere with this tonight, but I figured I'd at least bring it to everybody's attention. Uh, I'm, I'm having trouble getting my building up and I really want to do it before winter. I know that's what we started back in last fall, up January, February, March. But if I get an answer tonight of how to proceed, I've been, been told to come here and bring it to you because me bringing it to PNZ has been nothing but roadblocks. So that's why I'm here. Anybody wants to comment? That's great. If not, well, I, I'm going to ask a question. What's the normal the normal procedure? A site plan goes to PNZ, right? Okay. I agree. Correct, Mr. Dingman. You said you'd like to have your. I, sorry, my mic's off again, Mr. Dingman. If I heard you correctly, you said you're fine. You'd like to have your final plan approved. Good. We have submitted it uh, before the deadline two or three weeks ago, okay. and then one week before the deadline, after we've already submitted the site plan and the, I'm going to get my final plot approved okay. of the road. Yeah. So good. the final plot is exactly what was submitted to you and approved. So nothing has changed on that final plot for the for the road and the and the lots layout. Okay. All right. Sounds like um, with the final plot, what we're used to from planning and zoning's perspective, the public infrastructure would have to be constructed first and then dedicated before the city council could consider the final plot. Correct, Gerald. That is one option. Yes. That's that's the traditional right. option that we've had. I'd be happy to look, we'd be happy to look into this matter, but typically before city council can consider a final plat or a site plan on it, the public infrastructure has to be constructed to public, the city standards. We also have to accept it at the city council before that, or Mr. Dingerman would have to post, or the applicant would have to post a bond for it on it as well. And I'm not sure where we're at in that process. So the, stuff, uh, I've understood you correctly, but we have submitted the final plat to come to city council this month. But we're told we cannot submit it. That is, we with a bond, like you discussed. We're told we're told that the preliminary plat was incorrect. So we're told that we cannot submit it as it was already approved. And I went through a lot to get that approved. Yeah. In fact, I think I sold my soul in the middle of that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I think what was approved here should be what it is. And I'm being told that my setbacks and my front lots and side lots are not what was already approved. And we have submitted a final plot to go forward with a bond guarantee. So you do have your bonds in place? Yes. For it, okay. Um, we have been told it's on hold because what was approved is not going to be okay. We well, should have record of that. I, just, yeah, I got the records with you. Uh, yeah, and you keep impeccable. I don't think mine is on. What the hell? Um, you do keep impeccable records, and, and I need to, I, I want to. I don't need to. I want to really apologize to you because you have been extremely patient through this whole process. And I'm sorry that we're having to hear about this in, in this type of format because we're kind of in a position now where our hands are tied. But I do remember, like tied in making a, a decision for you at this time. But I do remember the approval process, and I was at the PNZ meeting 
where this, uh, you know, we it, just prior to it coming to council. So I'm kind of like with you. I'm completely puzzled by this because you do do your homework. You nobody can ever say that you're a shoddy uh, record keeper, <laughs> and you've spent an extraordinarily high amount of money on this project, too. As small as it is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we got the PNZ guy here tonight. Can we can we get some uh, light I'd, shed on this? I'd like to ask one question first, if I may. When when the approvals were made, like with the road issue, did that change any of the footprint of, of anything that, that no, would have we, wasn't uh, there been follow through effects of that? We submitted the plot, the preliminary plot that was approved on March eighth. So the city planning and zoning office had it for two and a half or over two months and they picked it apart a few times and we changed a few things, but nothing was changed on that. And it was just, you know, on March 8th, we submitted it with that road right away that was approved. Yeah. And remember, and the road right away off the Colts. The, the width of that yeah. was never the width changed. Width of the road, everything was there. All the setbacks were in place. And that had not changed since March 8th and was not asked to be changed, which everything has been asked to be changed a lot over the last year. So. Garden is under the understanding that once that preliminary plot is approved, that that is what we can go by moving forward. And just to clarify, Mr. Dingaman, when you say everything's changed, we'd be happy to look into it yeah. and report back Please. on it and, and take a look at this. But the preliminary plan should be the same that the city has approved. Now, if you're talking about potential site plan issues and modifications, it's entirely possible there may be some issues on, on that. No, but that's no. a different that's a different issue than your preliminary plan and your final plan. But we'd be more than, I'd be more than happy our staff would along with Jerry be more than happy to look at this. Okay. But then one, one more question just on the timing of everything and I know it's hard to think of winter right now, but when, when is the next does that normally go through PNZ? Yes. And so when is the deadline for PNZ for that to go on, to to be heard by PNZ? Last month Anybody? A few weeks ago, Monday. And but I you? submitted everything by then. Everything's been submitted, been checks been paid. I've just been told it's on hold, and he's telling me I have to go to the Board of Adjustments to change it, which I shouldn't have to change anything because we're not changing what was already approved. Uh, we approved. Let's see, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, we're we not talking about site plan approved. issues versus. No, planning. this isn't site plan. This was the preliminary okay. plot that was okay. submitted. We'll be happy to look Can into we this. Yes. this for him? Because we'll he's, try. Yes. he's been so patient. I, I, I hear the term on hold, and I look at pumpkin spice lattes coming into <laughs> the various stores, and um, I'm thinking to myself, if I was in your shoes, or were in your shoes, I would want it to be expedited. Yes, I'm, I'm still hoping to be at PNZ's meeting this month with the site plan, or the, not site plan, but the final plot presented to get approved. And that and is our goal then, right? Yep, and we also submitted a site plan with that to go with it if that worked. He said we could, but then everything got put on hold because what you guys approved was not correct. It will be checked into. Thank you very much. That's all I can ask. All right, thanks, Jeff. You bet. Anybody else? Okay, Mandy, can you pull up? Uh, I just want to review, uh, try to clear up some of the confusion and some of the misinformation that's out there. So uh, this first slide shows the local option sales tax loss revenue and the current one that took effect January 1, 2012, and that will expire December 31, 2023. Uh, total estimated revenue from that has been eighteen million two hundred thousand, and there's what it has been spent on: uh, eighteen million two hundred indoor pool, sports park, Caldwell, Wonder and other projects, and then property tax relief. Uh, so fifty percent has been spent on projects, and fifty percent has been on uh, property tax relief and infrastructure. Okay. So that's where we've been with the current tax, all right, Mandy? Uh, and so as this is what council has discussed moving forward uh, by extending the tax from January 1, 2024 to December 31, 2043. 
the same mix of spending is going to be proposed by the City Council. 50% will be spent on infrastructure projects. 50% will be spent on quality of life projects. So there is no difference in how the money is going to be spent this one compared to the last one. Our estimated lost revenue during this period is uh, 45 to 55 million, and that's based on a 2% rate growth. So I did a little research, and in, in the first year that Pella had the lost tax revenue, we took in $905,000. This latest, latest fiscal year, which just ended June 20 of 2022, we took in $1,854,000 of lost revenue. So you can see significant growth over that time period. Uh, and so I think it's safe or fair to project some kind of growth uh, moving forward. Pella continues to grow. We uh, continue to increase our sales tax revenue. So our best estimate is somewhere between 45 and $55 million will be collected with the new loss rev the new lost in place starting in January of 2024. Okay, Andy? And and then the other part of this discussion, uh, we have had a facilities uh, plan. We have had a pretty extensive discussion about a facilities plan moving forward. And the reasons why we're talking about uh, some of these facilities is uh, obviously uh, a new rec center, fixing the community center. Those are important projects to the community that, that will help uh, the quality of life within the community. We're always looking to attract new citizens, which in turn, when we do that, and I kind of explained this already, will increase our property tax base, which allows us to maintain the low, the very low compared to most communities, property tax rate that we have. And so that's, you know, those are things we consider as we talk about adding, adding facilities, adding amenities to the communities. Uh, when I talk to the uh, leadership at our larger corporations. One of their big challenges is, is people, attracting people. And so from their perspective, the more things we can do as a community, and they put their money where their mouth is. They spend a ton of money in this community to enhance these types of projects. We have uh, $12,250,000 uh, already committed to these projects. Think about that number. You go to Waukee and talk about it. You go to Ankeny and talk about it. Nobody has that kind of support from the local community. So we cannot, we cannot emphasize enough how important that is. And if, if there's any question about whether this community is going to support these projects, there's a pretty good answer right there. $12,250,000. And we have not come close to tapping what else is out there. This is from four sources, four sources. So we can tap a whole lot more private community funds to help these projects. That's a pretty good start. Okay, Mandy? <clears throat> so our base plan, and here's where all the misinformation is going to be revealed that's out there. I've heard $65 million for an indoor rec facility. I've heard $3 million for a dog park. That's all fantasy. That's all fantasy. That's not based in any kind of reality or fact. Here is the plan that we talked about very extensively. It's a $45 million plan. And with that, under that plan, we do not raise property taxes on our $45 million plan. How are we going to generate the $45 million? $22 million will come from the city of Pella, and that is done in two ways. Number one is a $17 million, do I have a slide? To, uh, yeah, so how are we going to pay for the $22 million? That's the question that you as citizens need to be concerned about. So we're going to, we're going to use $5.5 million, or $5 million from fund balance that we have. This is cash that's sitting in the bank that the city has 
that's undesignated, unearmarked, and so we will take five million dollars from our existing fund balance to to invest in these projects. The second part of the city's investment is the seventeen million dollar bond that will be issued, backed by the local option sales tax, and it'll take 50% of the local option sales tax over the next 20 years to pay that bond back. We've had our bond council do it. He's factored in interest rate hikes, and so that bond will be paid back by local option sales tax, not you guys, not property tax owners. It'll be sales tax revenue. Okay, so that's where the city's going to get our $22 million for the, these projects. And then to get to our $45 million, obviously, we need more money from other sources. Okay, and we're working on those. We, as I said, we have $12,250,000 that's already pledged for these projects. So that's a pretty good start. Add that to our $22 million. We're up close to 35 million of our 45 million. We're talking with the county about working with us on the, some of the road project. We're talking, we have applications ready to go for the state of Iowa. There's several grants out there. And, and as I said before, we've only tapped the surface of potential uh, community uh, uh, donations. We have a lot of people still to talk to that I know will step up. So, $22 million, that's the city's investment. Don't believe this $65 million, this numbers that are thrown out there. $22 million is what the city, in our plan, has talked about committing to. What are we going to do with the $22 million? $31 million, can you go back, Mandy? $31 million is earmarked for the indoor rec facility. That number was arrived at based on a facility built in Marion, Iowa in 2020, I believe, or 21, factoring in some inflation. And so we're earmarking $31 million for the new rec center. $65 million, the number I see in here, is fantasy. It's crazy. No one has said $65 million. We've talked about $31 million. Obviously, the size and the scope and the scale of the project will be dependent on costs. And prior to this group approving anything, we will have solid cost estimates before we start any project. Maybe it's not as big as we think want it to be, whatever. We will only build what we can afford to build. Six million dollars is earmarked for an extension of University Street. Uh, to get out to the sports park. Whether we do an indoor facility on the sports park, this is a much needed uh, extension anyway. I don't know if you guys go to soccer matches. I have got a couple granddaughters that play soccer on Saturday morning, and it's a traffic mess when, uh, when we're moving from the 8.30 to the 10 o'clock because there's people coming and going. So we absolutely need a second exit out of our sports park. The other thing that the extension University Street will do is allow us to put in a bike trail that will come out of the middle of the city of Pella to the sports park. We have a ton of kids that want to ride their bikes out there. There's no good way to get there now. It's dangerous. You're, uh, you're on uh, roads with a lot of traffic. So by extending University Street uh, it will allow us to get a bike trail so kids can bike out to our sports park, which gets used a lot. Uh, and then the other uh, five and a half million, is, that's the minimum investment we've talked about to upgrade the, uh, the uh, community center. Obviously, the community center has been kicked back and forth for a long time. We want to we want to do it something. There's a group out there that have worked very hard called the Friends of the Community Center that have done some fundraising. So at minimum, we are pledging five and a half million for that renovation. Whatever they can raise above that will determine what we can do with that facility. But we're committing to get it at least in a usable fashion because right now we know there's part of it that can't be used 
because uh, of just some infrastructure issues and those kind of things. So our best estimate was five and a half million to get those infrastructure, and then 2.5 million of contingency built into the plan. So that's the 35 million. That the, that's the only message the city of Pella has given. We no one has said anything about a 60 million dollar uh, uh, rec center. None of those numbers are reality. This is what we've talked about in presentation. And again, there's our funding sources, 17 million of the bond that is backed by the local option sales tax. And I just want you to think about what that really means. How many of you have uh, bought a house and paid cash for it every time? No, not likely. You went and got a, you went and got a mortgage to pay for it. What does the bank want to know when you get a mortgage? They want to know how you're going to pay it back, right? That's that's what matters in that situation. This is the same way. We we issue a $17 billion bond to do these projects. How are we going to pay that back? We're going to pay it back with 50% of the lost revenue from the extension uh, over the next 20 years. That will be enough to cover the bond. The other 50% of the lost revenue is going to be spent exactly the way it's spent now. It's going to be spent on infrastructure projects, which we've talked a lot about semantics and those kind of things. But whatever we spend on infrastructure from the lost revenue is property tax money we don't have to raise. And so it's, it's you can call it what you want, but by spending that money, we will, are not going to consider raising property taxes. And, I mean, I think the city of Pella has a pretty solid track record, 21 years of no property tax rate increase. Again, we've had a discussion. That's the only thing we can control, uh, this group can control. Valuations and all of that, school tax, county tax, that's, you know, it's all lumped into one number that you pay your property tax. And so it's really, con property tax is incredibly confusing. But the only thing we can control here is the rate. We don't control valuation, so we don't control what you pay. If your property tax goes up 10% next year, it's not because of anything the city of Pella did. It's a valuation issue. And so that needs to be very clear. And as I said, we're working on the other 23, well, part of that 23 million is the 12 million. We actually started with 12 million from three entities, and I actually had somebody stop me on the street one day and said, we'd like to contribute $250,000 to this project. So I don't know how much, how much evidence of community support for a project like this people need, but that's pretty impressive to me. So we have 12250000 pledged now. Okay, is this it? Uh, well, yeah, we kind of touched on this, the estimated cost of the community center to just fix what's broken, bring it up to snuff so that the gym can be used and it can be used. I mean, it's, it, needs, it needs a lot of work just to be a decent facility. And so we're committing, we're planning on committing that. And again, the Friends of the Community Center are a group that's been working hard on it, and they're going to uh, do some fundraising. So... Whatever they raise over and above the five and a half million, uh, and when we get that number, we'll make some decisions. No decision has been made on any of these projects. No decision. What has happened? This lost <coughs> this lost vote has become a referendum on the on a new rec center. We're not voting on a rec center. We're voting to extend a lost revenue for the city of Pella. This is a critical funding source for the next 20 years. If we don't pass it, that's $2 million a year that the city of Pella will not have. And then we will have to talk about raising property taxes. And so that's what this vote is about, is to extend that. And, and here we've laid out as clear as we can lay out what the intended uses are. And I've heard people say, we've got to hold the council accountable for this, that, and the next thing. You darn right. And we cherish your scrutiny. We have an exhaustive budget 
uh, sessions in January and February. I've been involved in three of them, and we spend hours, and we fine tooth, we go through the budget, which is about that thick of pages. We go through that budget every January, February, in anticipation of the next fiscal year. And so you as citizens have every right, and you should, you should ask us, why are we spending this money here? Or what are we spending this money on? And we will have to justify it. So nothing, is, nothing happens without public input and in things that we do here. So we're, gonna, we're saying that we're going to use 50% of the lost revenue for infrastructure. You can hold us accountable for that. Anybody can hold us accountable for that moving forward. So there's nobody trying to hide anything. There's nobody trying to... Uh, there were people that were shocked when it said 0% in the... Uh, when it came on the ballot. That's... It's not because we didn't talk about it. We had a public meeting. We talked about it. We talked about not designating the, uh, a certain amount. And mostly, we, as the discussion, as I remember it, and I did go back and listen to the minutes, which you're welcome to do too, we talked about um, maintaining flexibility over the next 20 years. 20 years is a long time. And so to say exactly, uh, you know, this much is property tax relief. And again, it is semantics because property tax relief comes in many ways. And the way we're uh, accomplishing it is through infrastructure uh, projects that otherwise would take property tax to pay for it. And I noticed most of the people that uh, uh, were here to tell us what we, what we were talking about, it's all wrong, they seem to have left because most of them don't want to know the truth. They don't want to know the facts. And, and uh, these are the facts. Is that it, Mandy? Just two more. Oh, yeah, yeah, and this reiterating the 31 million. And we also have a a uh, group of 11 citizens that are working diligently with our architect engineer firm that we approved on the design of the new uh, of a new indoor rec facility. They've done some great work. There's uh, some uh, really cool stuff that they've they've talked about. The the group is a diverse group of basketball, volleyball, swimming. Uh, you know, somebody talked about. Uh, uh, there's a da you know, dance, somebody from dance, uh, soccer, all the sports, all the potential uses. So we talked about the senior citizens. There's a beautiful design for a walking track that our senior citizens would love in the wintertime. They would, you know, I see people walking in the mowing parking garage and those places. A nice walking track would, would work very well for uh, for those kind of things. So this facility will be designed to meet all of the needs of a diverse population. Uh, obviously, we can't be everything to everybody, but this group is working hard to do their best. And from the reports I get, I've stayed out of it. I don't go to their meetings. I want them to design it. From what I understand, they've made some great progress, and uh, they feel good about it. Um, and yeah, just the proposed site we originally threw up there uh, was out at the sports park. We think that's a great location for it. Uh, consolidate all of our athletic facilities uh, and all those things. So that's a, and we have the room. We have plenty of room to get it done there. So that general vicinity, I think the, the current iteration of what will be there is configured a little bit different, but that'll be the general general area for the for the facility so I said I'd take any questions after my discussion so please yes I I know I had something to speak about earlier I want to thank you I feel that your presentation is about two months too late I, I mean I appreciate what you said it's been the most convincing for myself as a concerned citizen of how we're going to pay for this. And 
I'm not, I, I still got questions. I'm just saying it was the most convincing that's been presented throughout the last year. Because I think there have been things that got adjusted from earlier comments, obviously. And I, I do remember higher numbers than what you're talking now. So, I mean, I'm glad they're at a better level and a, what appears to be a controllable level. Well, so I, th I thank you. And I, I thank you. I, I wish it would have been earlier, and I think we probably would have saved the community from a whole lot of hardship. So I appreciate your comments. Uh, uh, I, I will say that this presentation, everything that I, I didn't make this new. This was all, this was all given at a public hearing uh, April, 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 in April. April. This $45 million plan was spelled out exactly as I did tonight. Uh, but you're right, it, we probably could have reiterated it again. Uh, because not everybody's at every meeting and listens to every meeting, but we have had this exact discussion previously and laid it out exactly. Nothing is, I guess, just want to make sure everybody understands the message has not changed from the city since we started talking about any of this. The message has been the same. Uh, but I'm glad that it helped. Appreciate your comments. Uh, hopefully people watching or listening it helped. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, excuse me, Mayor, just a little thing. You mentioned the if your taxes go up, check with the assessor. Um, you did mention, too, though, that there's other taxing bodies. I don't know if you have a cemetery, maybe an airport, school district. Any of those have an ability to raise taxes, too. So yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, the three main if you look at your property tax statement, the three main school district makes up what eighty percent or school district is it's a the, big is a majority of the is a majority of the tax. The county and the city are the three, and then yes, there's oh I know there's like drainage assessments and other things that happen, but from the city of Pella, the only thing we can control is the rate. That's the only thing we have control over. Uh, you know, I had a, I got an email from somebody the other day said that if they vote yes for this uh, tax, their property tax, their property taxes are going up 24% next year. And so somebody must have told them, somebody must have said it. I have no idea where it came from. I kindly asked, I kindly told them that their information was incorrect. If I'm not saying their property tax won't go up 24%, because it could based on a valuation increase, but it's nothing to do with this particular vote. And then I asked them to convey to their source, please stop telling false, please stop giving out false information. But anyway, those are the kind of things that people are emailing me and asking me. And uh, so I think somebody had a, I just had a question about um, the soccer complex. Is there a plan that we're keeping our existing soccer complex as is and utilizing that, or is there going to be a plan, something changing over there? Uh, we we have forward? yeah we have talked about potentially moving. I think that's something we would like to do, but we don't have any imminent plans to do that. We think from a city standpoint, it would make a lot of sense. We have. We have enough ground here to do that. The other thing is we just spent $1.7 million on the road around that soccer complex. That would free up 30, 30 acres of prime development ground so we would get some return for our, so yes. So then is this phased out then? So this, of the 45 million, the soccer complex? Is not part of the 45. Okay. No, that would be an, an additional. The facility, which includes a new indoor pool and, and uh, the recreation facility. And the road. And the road, yep. Okay, so and the extension. Potential. So baseline road would be extended to the north to the university. University would be extended the full mile. So another uh, hard to codify or quantify another uh, 
uh, I think, big asset here by extending University Street. Now we have, I know there's 130 acres there, becomes some pretty prime development ground to help us grow either housing developments, some commercial, that kind of thing too. Once the road is there, now you can uh, try, I think we'll have a lot of interest from people to do some kind of development there also. Yes? Do I understand that the total involvement of Pella tax would be, or Pella money would be 22 million? 22 million, yep. That's it? That's it. Guaranteed? Yep. Well, I'm never going to guarantee. I'm, I, George Bush once said he would not raise taxes, and then he did. And got, so, uh, and he paid for it. <laughs> and he paid for it. The current plan says 22 million coming from the city right now. And, and that's on the street and the indoor facility? That is, that is broken down 31 million for the indoor, 5.5 million for the community center, 6 million for the roads, and 2.5 million contingents. That's where we get the 45 million. And we aren't, we aren't at the 45 million yet. We have the 22 million commitment from the city and the 12 million of private money. So we're at 30, uh, 34 million. So we have a, a $11 million gap yet. But we're pretty confident that we're gonna, in discussions we're having with the county and the state, that we will fill that gap. Then from there, if we can go raise another five million, let's say from the community, that's five more million we'll have to spend. We will not build something we cannot afford. And I know people talk about the operation of a facility like this. 100% all of that has to be evaluated so that we know exactly what it's gonna cost. You know, our library, our swimming pools, our sports complex, our parks department, all of those things are paid for with property tax money. They're community amenities. And so this facility would be similar to that, a community uh, facility. Uh, but we will know before we ever approve uh, building it what our estimated operating cost is to the city and whether we can handle it in our budget just like we evaluate the library and everything else. It'd be no I different. Heard, yeah. I think that might be some confusion too because there are no definitive numbers or details right. for us to see, but we're already committing the money. You know what I mean? Well, this is a plan. We're not committing. No one has voted to do any of this. We still right. have to but do the, all the approvals. But on the ballot, that rec center is in that That's a potential use, yes. Okay. There's a whole list of potential yep. Yep. uses, and the rec center is there. And our plan, as we've spelled out, is to invest the $22 million, with $17 million of it coming from the local option tax, which will equate to half of the local option tax, like we've said from the beginning, 50% to be spent on amenities, community projects. And those will all be separate votes here. Yes. And, and yes. Separate discussions Everything here will votes. need will need uh, have public hearings, public input. The you know the question about the operations until we have a pretty solid uh, idea of what we're going to have, it's hard to estimate those operating costs and expenses. We are obviously there's a lot of communities that have these facilities, so we have a lot of data to draw from. Uh, so I think we will, when we actually get to approving any of these projects, we will have a pretty spelled out uh, pro forma of what this facility will cost to operate. And a couple things that are kind of a sidebar, I'm sure Jeanette would support this, is um, our existing indoor pool has just about hit its useful life for any of you that use it. And also, we, we need to be making investments in the current soccer complex. It's also been there a long time. So, not a bad time to be looking <coughs> at. All right, anybody ha have any more questions? Thank you for, oh, yes. You say that 
these are plans, how rigid is that plan? I mean, you say 5.5 for the community center. What's to keep you from switching that to the rec? Well, I suppose nothing because the council <laughs> makes all those spending decisions. Right. So oh, yes, yeah. that, I mean that's that's what we have discussed, and that's what we you need to hold us accountable. If suddenly we have a meeting and we say we're going to not spend any money on the community center, I would expect to hear a lot of input from a lot of citizens. But does that input do any good? Well, I would think it would. Yes, it does every so. November. <laughs> uh, it does in November. Yeah, uh, you can. Or you can elect. You know. So yes, we. As I said, we uh, welcome any scrutiny of what we do. Uh, we because that's the best way. That's what citizens no. need to to make us accountable for how we spend money. That's that's really. I think everyone would agree that is probably the biggest task we have as a council is our finances, the city's finances, how we spend money, how we best use it to the best for the community. And so, yes, we want you to question everything. I sure wish this would come out two months ago. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it kind of did, but it just didn't it's generate not, that. No, not like it is now. now. Because we... We had a discussion. I don't. I don't think anybody said anything that night. We talked about the ballot. We talked about what was going to be on the ballot. We passed a resolution that specifically spelled this all out at that time. But people didn't get interested until it comes time. So, uh, yeah, we may, maybe. Yeah, in hindsight, uh, you know, we've tried to have some. Uh, public meetings with different groups around town to try to talk through some of this stuff, but we, we, uh... John, is this something that can be put on the website that people can go to? And hear yeah, I think, Mandy, we have some links to some of this information on the website yeah, now. Just get the word out there. Everybody yeah. Just get the word out. I mean, hopefully tonight's uh, presentation, people will talk about it and Obviously, there's some people here who aren't going to believe a word I said, so that's okay. <laughs> if there's anything I'd say, leave knowing that the two are not coupled. Rec Center and Lost don't belong coupled together. Lost has been extremely beneficial for the cool. city of Pella, and it would be a detriment to all of us as citizens to vote, make this a one issue vote, so to speak, uh, because it would cost everyone in lots of different areas. So I think that's a really important that. point. But why couldn't have waited till next March or whatever, in six months or so, right. and get all these figures in front of us so we know? Yes. But we knew nothing. All we see was a zero. Can, a can zero. I, that means this, nothing. Is this something that you guys who are connected, is this something that you can help us with? At least. Uh, share the information that the mayor shared? Is that something now that, whether you agree with the information or not, is that something that you can help with to share with your folks? And video. There you go. <laughs> video, yeah. exactly. Social media. Yeah. Social media. But I, I do think at the end of the day, it's important <coughs> so that we don't get people panicking that the loss tax, if if it is voted down, if we don't lose that money, it just means we go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big piece, and it's designed that way. That's why it's designed as it is, It's so that every six months, if, if there's something we need to tweak, we tweak it, and then we revote. Now, the only time you would lose that amount of money is if you don't pass a loss tax 90 days before its expiration date. That is the only way we would lose that money. And that's why the last vote is September 2023, because that's 90 days before the expiration date, which is 12-31-23. Yeah. All that. So, 
I just don't want but, people to think that, oh my God, we're going to lose all this money. Right. I think a lot of people do think that if it gets voted down, no, now, then we just don't have the loss tax. And they, no, no. So it's one, there one, are against this. They don't, yeah. they don't want no loss tax. We understand the importance of that. Sure. Right. Right. I think from a timing standpoint, I know people have asked why we're doing it now. Well, no, one, there's a few reasons, but one of the reasons is the rest of Marion County has already passed their lost and extended it. And Marion County is really nervous. The, the Bussy and Twin Cedars and Melcher Dallas, or uh, all those smaller communities, Pella generates a big majority of the sales tax revenue in this county, and that gets redistributed. We don't get everything back that we collect. We only get a portion. So the rest of Marion County is somewhat dependent on Pella uh, generating the, the lost revenue, too. So uh, they've already all extended theirs. We're the only jurisdiction left that... Uh, Hasn't hasn't voted to extend, so that that's part of the reason why we want to get it get it done so we can plan and we know we know what uh, that we have in place. Okay, thank you for your indulgence. Uh, we have one more item to work on here, so we will move into a policy and planning to talk about the boss line and conference center repairs. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, and as Mayor DeWard stated, uh, the purpose of this policy and planning session is to discuss potential repairs to the Boston London Conference Center. It's important to note, back in 2020, uh, this facility suffered significant water damage due to a frozen water pipe on, on that, and as a result, um, the conference center that we have pictured right up here, the front of it, has been closed since early 2020. A little bit of background on this. Previously, uh, through the insurance company's authorization, we did hire Cleaner and Associates to review what the cost would be to a total repair of the facility. Those plans have been prepared and now are under consideration and been reviewed by, rather take a step back, have been reviewed by the insurance carrier. And what we're going to be talking about this evening is what the insurance company has approved for reimbursement for the project and potential options for preparing the facility. So let's go ahead, Mandy, please. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. When the water damage first happened at the conference center, um, EMC, who is our insurance company, issued a payment of $469,000 for the project. And at the time, it was based on the estimated valuation of the facility, less depreciation. Also factored in the city's $5,000 deductible. To date, we've spent $215,000 on cleanup and restoration of the conference center, and we have sitting in city reserves $254,000 to apply towards this project. Now, the project that we're talking about this evening uh, that the insurance company has approved, and this would be the total repair of the facility, totals just over six hundred, just under $605,000. And as you can see, it includes modification of the restroom facilities for ADA compliance, Placing floor, walls, ceilings, and we have pictures of some of this as well, associated electrical work. And since the conference center is over two floors, the insurance company has also authorized the installation of an elevator at the facility as well. So the base plan, which is totally covered 100% by insurance, is just under 605000 Let's go ahead, please, Mandy. Now, what we also have, in addition to the items that were water damaged, and I would say the majority of these items is normal wear and tear on, on the facility. The facility was constructed somewhere between the mid-1990s to late-1990s, early 2000s, so it's some of these items are showing their age. But we do have a list of alternatives that total just under $154,000, and these include replacing windows, uh, replacing damaged flooring and wall covering in the kitchen area and also adding a family restroom on the main floor of the conference center as well. We do have some pictures throughout um, the presentation, so Mandy, let's go ahead. And I'm actually gonna call on Jeanette Vaughn. I know Jeanette, I'm putting you on the spot, but could you walk us through some of the areas that we have for alternates that you have as far as the pictures up here, please? So the, the previous slide was the windowsill both in the lower part of the building and then on the main level, um, conference area and restroom. These next few, um, Um, and then throughout the ki kitchen, there's been um, 
discoloration to the ceiling, um, and then portions of the ceiling are cracking and actually starting to pull away, um, pull away from the, the wood framing. And then on the right uh, picture, that's an existing storeroom that we've identified it was a lease proper size for our family restroom. And that would be on the same level. So those are the alternates, not associated with fixtures. Thank you, Jeanette. Let's go ahead and talk about options. Option number one would be to repair the facility and what the insurance company has authorized. So this would re be repair of all, I'd say, water damaged areas, bringing everything up to current building codes and including adding an elevator at the facility. Total cost of that $605,000. We've already received, uh, we have a balance of $253,000 in, in our account that we're currently holding as insurance payments. The insurance company would issue another check for right around three hundred fifty-one thousand dollars, and we'd have right at that brings us up to the six hundred five thousand dollar expense. Option number two for the city, same scenario as far as the revenue on the project. However, in addition to the base facility, what I call the insurance or the base bid, which is the insurance bid of six hundred five thousand, we'd also add in those alternates that Jeanette just walked us through that total one hundred and fifty-three thousand dollars. So we'd be up to. Total expense is seven hundred fifty-eight thousand. And what this would mean is that we'd have to dedicate city funds, which most likely would be property taxes on this, about one hundred and fifty-three thousand dollars for this project. And so, from our standpoint, what we're looking for is direction tonight from the city council. I want to emphasize, similar to the other projects that we're talking about tonight, there's an extensive um, review that would be done with this project. What we're looking for is just general direction to give to our architect and engineer. Most likely what we would do as far as the alternates, and I think with the way we're planning on bidding it is seeking bids for the 605000 listing out as alternate seats for $153,000, and then evaluating once we have bids actually in, in hand would be our recommendation. But ultimately, Mr. Mayor, what we're here tonight to talk about and ultimately receive from the council is direction on this project and which way we'd like to go. And we'd also like to talk if there are any additional ideas that we'd like to consider for the facility. Now is the time to be, be talking about those. But our plans would be, so we got direction tonight from the council, we'd want to finish up engineering on the project, hopefully have this project ready to bid by December, January of this year, and then the renovation will be planned during 2023 at, at the conference center. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I'm more than happy to answer council's questions on what has been presented for the Boss London Conference Center. So I think you said the, uh, the insurance policy is a replacement cost policy. So whatever, whatever the base bid, if it came in at 650,000, they would, they would cover that. Corey, and, and defer that question to you. Yeah. 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 Two quick questions. I, I'm a little bit surprised. Were, were they readily agreeable to an elevator since we didn't have one before? Uh, yeah, I mean, when I first sent it over to them, they responded back pretty quickly that it would be included because of the extent of the re renovation, you're required to bring a building up to code. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that surprised me. Didn't know that. And then, then secondly, and this is a, a, a more, I, I guess, future goal, what, what is the end result for this building to be used for upon completion? What we had, and I'll take a stab at that, and I think that's part of the discussions in, in, that we'll be entertaining with this project is to determine the ultimate use, what it was used beforehand, and this would have been by the golf course operators when the city contracted for that. The conference center, we actually had a restaurant, and at one time, um, on there a couple different restaurants over the years, probably multiple restaurants through the years, and then the conference center itself, outside of the restaurant use, was used for rentals of the, of the, of the facility. Um, the Boss Lot and Golf Course was a very popular place for all sorts of rentals, weddings, um, high school graduation parties on it as well, but that was a profitable, and we also hosted business meetings as well with the conference center. The lower level at one point in time was actually multiple uses. There used to be a separate bar area on the lower level. In addition, that turned into a workout fitness area at one point in time, and then the latest use that we had down there was the golf golf simulator use that was in the lower level as well. So they've always been, I'd say, auxiliary uses that were intended to su support the boss lot and golf, golf course. So, so what, what I guess I was wondering if, if we had a vision for what that could be, what, what, would that be helpful for us for those additional things, you know, that, that, that while we're doing the, the renovation now, 
that something costs 153 now for another 50,000 to make it really what we want it to be at the end. Is, is it, do you see what I'm saying on that? Yeah. You know, it, it'd be better if we could, if, if we knew where, where we wanted to be when Jeanette tells us what we want that to be, <laughs> that, that we, we do those alternatives to meet, to meet that goal. I think that's the most cost effective. And maybe, maybe the 153 does that already, I don't know. Well, I think that we've got two different things going on and I, we understand, and I'll try to summarize what I think the questions were. What the 153, those were items that were not water related damage on it, they need replaced anyway. And so these are areas that would necessarily be the responsibility of the insurance right, carrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are just normal wear and tear items on the facility. And the council member Banster's point mm -hmm. is, is talking about the ultimate use, what we're planning to do with the facility. I think that's personally a very good idea that if we, just to make sure we're all on the same page, what the end use is. What we've really geared to date is a use that has geared, been geared on things that have occurred in the past. For instance, a restaurant out the Boston on a golf course could be advantageous to support the golf course. Having additional rental areas for the facility could be additional profitable areas to support the golf course on it as well. So we've been operating under the assumption by repairing these areas, bringing it up to code, that it's all been based entirely on what's been done in the past. But I do think it, it has value to talk about the future intended use of the facility if there are any significant modifications from what's been done in the past, we should be planning for them now. So that's a very good point. And these are uses that don't necessarily have to be city run. I mean, we could finish it to white box and put it on the market to lease out, correct? The, that's always an option, yes. Because an elevator alone makes it yeah. probably more valuable. Yeah, that, that really enhances the potential uses we have in yeah. an elevator. So does the base get it to white box rentable or is the 150 get it to white box rentable? Well the base of uh, uh, council member Carl Stillman, option number one is this is a replacement and bringing up to code all the areas that were damaged by the water, water damage which is mainly the conference center and I, I call it the lower former boss bunker area on the facility. But is that finished ready to be rented? So that brings it up. And open a business at that day once it's finished. Well, we believe the conference center is. Now, as far as the 153, I think what we'd be looking at in the areas on some of the other areas, probably if we're looking at a restaurant, there's likely kitchen improvements that are above and beyond this if we wanted to have a restaurant back in the kitchen area. Those would be items that we'd be happy to talk about. And I think the council member Banster's point is looking at really the intended use, the uses that we want to look at the facility, and then we can target those through this repair. But I guess that's what I well, was thinking. I guess my question is a bit to that. Maybe you just make it a white box, we don't put it on our dime, and let a tenant see the potential in it, and let the marketplace decide what it is, so the TI, a tenant improvement, can do it. Mm -hmm. If it wants to be a fancy restaurant, then the white box, or whatever, you know what I mean? In other words, I don't know that we have to come up with the the end point. Mm -hmm. I think we can get on a marketplace and attract somebody to do something. I, I just don't know if we could attract that without some basic kitchen improvements or not. Well, I, you I, I, I don't know. Rotting window sills, like that's. Uh, oh, it's at least got to be a catering well, kitchen. You know, and the windows go into the golf area. I mean, I think we're going to have to replace the windows because they're so rotting. That, and that's, and that's going on the one fifty three. Mm -hmm. That gets it to rentable, which yeah. on a marketplace yeah. you know. Recoup that very quickly. Did, did Sunbank take out all the, the kitchen equipment? Is there any equipment in it anymore? There is. You know, yeah. there is. I, th I thought it was all gone. No. No. Uh, now, uh, there, there is some that would need to be replaced and upgraded to have another restaurant in there. And that's that side is into uh, Council Member Carlstone's point. And that's all part of the negotiation, could be part of the negotiations. But I think the items that Jeanette was looking at that she referenced in, we look at it as probably items that if we're going to have a kitchen use, you're going to need to probably have those taken care of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, those seem to be very base, basic. The, the, everybody, yes. no, no matter who rents it, we'll have to have that fixed. Yeah, I think we need to either at minimum spend the base package to, or tear it down and pocket the money. Feel like it's I was going to make a joke about if it burned down, would we have to replace it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll double the <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> but I mean, if really, we need to yeah. either fix it, and yeah. obviously, the insurance is going to allow us to do a pretty nice renovation without it costing us anything. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. In its heyday, it, it was very popular, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. Not popular enough. There have been like eight restaurants through there. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the Compton venue was yeah, a yeah. popular venue. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. finished all tourneys there. Well, we've been well, bank meetings there lots before. Of, lots of yeah. So I would, I would say let's move forward with the, the option two and then we can decide <laughs> what we, how we want to approach the yeah. alternate cost. Okay. Yep. What, so not, not to totally beat the dead horse, if it were torn down, would it tear back to what? Well, you'd have to keep the golf shop. Yeah. It probably. It kind of turns the corner, so would you stop at the... Yeah. Because there was a bunch of money spent on... That was an add-on, yeah. On uh, shoring up the restaurant area yeah. a yeah. few years yeah. ago, too, so yeah. you'd probably you know, try to keep that at minimum for use for the golf part. I mean, if you tore down the conference center and took the 600, well, that's only replacements, but you wouldn't get that. Yeah, you're not going to get that 350. That's that's right. uh, re that's the replacement. Yeah. At the end, we have 253,000 in the bank. Yeah. Now, from the insurance company. I think I think it, it would be wise to. I think it has value. Yeah. There's more. You know, you think about all the new housing going out between Vans Estates and uh, the new Boss Drive out and there and, and, and Boss Ridge, so Nine. potentially. That'd be a population moving westward. Yeah, so potentially there's good use for it. Okay, anything else? Got enough to go on? I believe so, thank you. All right, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Master Spore, all in favor, please say yes. Oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Dan Yes. Spore? Yes. Ian? Yes. Brandon Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hawkins? Yes. Motion passed. We are adjourned. Thank you.